Welcome to The Purple Door, a podcast for young women by young women, with your host, Shani Glounds. Each week, we deliver the best hard hitting analysis of topical issues that affect young women and how they deal with them. Hi, I'm Shanique. I'm Essence. I'm Crystal. And I'm Selima. Mental illness is a real issue in our society. Mm -hmm. It has so many elements and it affects so many people. And we have now as a society, especially in the Jamaican context, begun to look at mental illness in different ways. Because growing up, I thought mental illness just affected people who you saw on the road eating out of garbage pans or acting in a way that was not considered Mm -hmm. normal. But we've come to a place where we've realized that even those of us who are normal can be affected by mental illness. And we've also discovered that mental illness is very prevalent among women. And so as women in a church, in a society where this is happening, we want to add some of our opinions or experiences to the discussions about mental illness. So I'll allow Essence to start. Well, yes. Um, the first thing about mental illness, as Shani mentioned earlier, is not necessarily those alone who walk around barefooted and uh, walk for days not knowing where they are. And when you talk to them, they are disoriented. Mm-hmm. But it stems from, firstly, depression. Um, I have had the experience with family that... Um, The first sign of a mental struggle is where you become depressed and it may start out with one day and then you find that the person is just not responding after two days. When you're trying to get them, you can't get them or they will call you after a few weeks and they're saying about the same things they were saying before. At first, you don't pick up what's happening because you you can't relate to it. And I think this is where we go wrong as a society in that Mm -hmm. because we don't have the personal experience, we cannot relate to it. And so we don't know what is coming on and then eventually to realize that the person actually becomes mentally unsound so it is stemming from depression first and what the hospitals have been saying is that they have an increase in young females coming to them um, with the mental challenges and so it is a concern for a society in that Jamaica now I understand it's almost at 50 percent we have persons who have mental issues and though we may see them every day some persons are working and so but they're all on medication um Mm -hmm. so we're in a society where persons have to be medicated in order to function properly and so this is alarming and even from the standpoint of a christian and from our church's perspective being seventh adventist we may have concerns as to say, is this in our church? How many persons in our church are on prescribed medication so that they can function properly? But speaking from my perspective, I have seen quite a few young ladies, and I'm not talking about men now. It is mostly young ladies that we see in our churches kind of losing it, and you have to be there for them. Awesome. Well, my thing is, <clears throat> a person doesn't just lose it overnight. No. It starts from an experience that may cause them to feel many negative emotions and they find that they stay there and the negative emotions multiply on each other and become overwhelming in their mental space. How do we become more sensitive to the fact that your friend, someone who you consider mentally sound and okay, could Mm -hmm. possibly have an experience that if they were assisted if you had reached out if you had responded in a more sensitive informed way to their silent and subtle cries for help because sometimes people are going through things that they don't even know how to reach out Mm -hmm. that we could have prevented someone from crossing that line that thin line between sanity and insanity how do we deal with that reality and as women be more sensitive to each other well for me i am guilty in that when that person that I know that was reaching out for assistance because I didn't recognize it and because I was so self-absorbed that I did not see it as a cry for help. But I try to be there as best as possible because sometimes you find that 
trying to reach out, you're not in the immediate space of the person. The person may be miles away from you and you may get a call and you try as best as possible. But because you're so busy as a female and you're trying to do your own thing, make your own name work, do be a mother, do all these sort of things. Sometimes you don't find time that you should for each other and for persons who are reaching out to you. Um, as I said, but you know, you have to be there for them whenever they call. So I think it's a matter of sensitizing most persons to look out for certain signs because had I known that these were the signs to look out for, I am sure that I could have stopped it before it got so far. And so, as I said, it is a matter of not being selfish, just really being there, not thinking that what you are doing is more important than reaching out to somebody in their time of crisis. And sometimes we tend to, to shun it and just rub it off and say, no, man. And you brush it off not knowing for the individual it, it is a crisis moment. Mm -hmm. You say, no, but go and do something differently. Just leave that alone. You see it in a nonchalant attitude to just brush it off when the person at that time just needed an intervention. Mm -hmm. Okay, so for me, um, my mother and my sister, they're both mentally ill. Yes, they're both mentally ill. I couldn't have done anything because I was adopted, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, I was adopted. That's okay. Yes. We, we are here to be real, right? Yes. Yes. So we have to give crystals sometimes. sometimes. So, but this is it, you know, sometimes you feel hopeless. Yes. Like how you help persons in this state. And then sometimes you feel guilty. That's true. Because I know for me, I feel guilty on various levels because I know I could have reached out and paid more attention when mm -hmm. I did not. And mm -hmm. then you feel guilty because you say, how comes you are still here able to function and that other party who is your close family relative, unable to function as you do. And you know, in hindsight, seeing the stresses. Because uh, let's be real, most females are experiencing mental challenges for two basic reasons. Those who have been molested mm -hmm. and those who um, are not working out in terms of relationships. And um, it's on, you're unable to practically deal with those kind of situations some persons who are molested just lose it right away. Some of them, it takes time to get to a depressive state that they cannot come out of. And then for some persons, as I say, it's relationships, not knowing how to handle being rejected mm -hmm. and handle difficulties inside of, her, of her any kind of union, whether it be marriage or just regular boyfriend, girlfriend relationships. And sometimes that is what leads them into depression and then further into a mental state which they're unable to recover from. So, you know, these are the issues and that is why I say we need now to highlight these issues more, especially in our church sphere, to see how best we can assist our young ladies, talk more about it. I don't feel like we have uh, the institutions in place inside of our church where we can speak freely as women and though we have women's ministries mm -hmm. i have never seen women's ministries meet any person at their need at their best need that they need to be and this is where i want us to really look at how can we benefit from having women's ministries in our local churches we need to start looking at how we meet the needs of others to prevent mental illness seeing that we're talking about that and there are other issues too but we have to really be there to reach out to ensure that none of our ladies go depressed for more than two three days that is true and talking mm -hmm. about reaching out we have to be aware that mental illness manifests in a change in someone's normal functioning that is seemingly unexplained mm -hmm. so someone who is normally very you know, Bible. punctual and prepared and sociable and lively, all of a sudden you see them starting to fall off in, in terms of that they're coming to work late. Three, four days, they're just late. And then they're not as bubbly, they're not as... And, they're, and mm -hmm. you may not realize that there's no explanation, but something has happened to them that is causing them to function less yes. than optimum on mm -hmm. a mental level, mm -hmm. and it spills over into the physical realm. Things like not eating, 
some people have challenges keeping up with their their eating or some people eat more when mm-hmm. they're going through something yeah. they eat food as a comfort mm-hmm. um there are people who have challenges sleeping so things like these, if you're close friends with someone, you should be able to know that somebody, it is not strange that someone will say, you know, I didn't sleep last night. No, somebody who you know is normally a sleeper, like I'm a sleeper. Mm-hmm. If if I don't sleep, it's really bad. Mm-hmm. So if I say to somebody, if I say to my mother, mommy, you know, I didn't sleep last night. She knows that there's Red something flag. weighing down. And if this becomes chronic, then I'm going to need help. Yeah. So it's for us to be so in tune and to be so alert to know that when someone starts to, there's this change, this drastic shift mm-hmm. in how they normally function, that there can, there's, it's possible that there's a trigger that can develop into some type of mental illness. That's right. Can I share something sure. like from a pastor? I remember when I was going through severe depression, um, I didn't want to listen to anyone, so I I got advice from many friends, but uh, I shut them out because I was saying that, you know, they don't understand what I'm going through, so how can they tell me what to do? Mm -hmm. And then at one point, I was like, uh, not eating. I didn't care about myself. I didn't care about my physical appearance or anything. Mm -hmm. I was just, you know, all in my sadness and depression. And uh, one day, like... uh, I was like, well, night. I just wanted something bad to happen to me because I thought that no one cared about me. I wasn't loved or anything. Up until one one day, this sister came to me from church and uh, she actually invited me to church. I didn't go to church at that time. And I went. uh, And from there, the support and all actually, you know, turn the tables from there and I could have been mentally ill but mm-hmm. thanks to be to God mm-hmm. you know I got to, the sister came in right on time and mm-hmm. turned the situation around God is good yeah. yes. I'm so happy that you were spared that because right. what she's what she described experiences it is real manifestation mm-hmm. of mental illness and mm-hmm. I want people to understand you know that someone who is not diagnosed with a chronic mental illness can experience bouts of mental illness it's like someone who is healthy you're not suffering from diabetes hypertension Mm -hmm. any of those things but you can come down with the flu and it can really knock you down for a while it's the same thing with mental illness you are not on medication you're not seeing a psychologist or a psychiatrist but you can go through a a period where your mental state is just messed up because of an experience you're not handling it well you're overwhelmed and so it manifests in things like not taking care of yourself not sleeping not eating not wanting to listen to anybody and it's really for people who are close to you to find a way to reach you to save you from what you're experiencing because many times people who are experiencing these things can't even help themselves (laughs) yes i have had many experiences with persons who are mentally ill family member and friend and you know it's like it it tends to take a toll on me because my my mother and my sister they're both mentally ill and whenever i see other person around even on the road you know some person might be eating from garbage bin and so it's like it constantly comes back to my mind and I get, I tend to be emotional and I also find myself being more sensitive to them because you don't know what has happened to, to them. them. And sometimes a person might see you and, you know, they see you acting crazy and all, but they don't know the, the, the background. So whenever we see persons who are suffering from mental illness, it is for us to reach out to them. What I do with my sister, because I, my mother lives in Clarendon, but... My sister is closer to me, so I tend to visit her more often. Mm. You know, try to be there for her, call her and stuff like that, because those are the things that will, you know, help them to right. cope. So that's what I tend to do. Yes. Um, well, for me, um, well, I've been through the no sleeping phase. Okay. And um, I'm at my best health um, when I'm mentally stable. So if I'm off, you're going to see me having either I don't eat or I eat too much in one go. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, and I, I find that 
somebody, a friend of mine said to me, I said, like, he'll check up on me and say, are you okay? Like, if he sees me selling for two too minutes, long. Too, yeah, too long, he'll text, what's going on? Are you okay? Mm-hmm. And if I'm not answering, he said, I said, so he starts to, you know, and he says, when last you exercise, when last you go out and, you know, just take time for yourself, that sort of thing. And uh, so I was like, what exercise have to do with it? And he said to me, um, you have to exercise in order to release those endorphins that yeah. keep the brain going properly. So mm-hmm. I never even looked at that because I'm not that kind of person who um, I speak to this and speak to that. I'm very introverted. So I like my personal space and I'll be alone. But I am thinking now that even now this group that we have started, so for young ladies to bond together and even the exercise program that, that is in it, it's very important. Very important. And so as ladies, we need to push ourselves. We need to come together. It's very important. I think for women, women's ministries, we can do more for each other. We need to bond together to get each of us in the frame of mind that we ought to be in. So it's very important. And as Crystal said, I too look at persons who are mentally unsound differently now. Before I was afraid of them, mm-hmm. but I actually go and speak to them now. Mm-hmm. I'm not afraid anymore. And I will hold a conversation with them because I realize that they are lucid some of the time. They can actually speak to you. So it's just that they are, they don't care. As Salima said, you might be that state where you don't care how you look to the public. You mm-hmm. don't care if you're walking barefoot. They're in a state of don't care. And so that is really what they are in. So I, I will go and I will speak to them and they will answer. You know, so, and, you know, we we too who are faced with members of the family who are like that and persons we know, we tend to get down on, on ourselves too, as um, Crystal said, because we wonder why, what what can we do to help them? And we, we, we feel guilty because I know it's a challenge for me. Mm-hmm. Being who I am, shepherdess, lawyer, you may say, right. I have to be running down my family member barefoot and getting person to hold and grab her so we can take her to the hospital. Mm-hmm. You understand? And so these are the pressures they face and then persons we say, so how they get her to be like this? You cannot stop it. And you Sorry. try the best you can. I mean, you speak, you reach out, but the point is it's too late now. So mm-hmm. I think we should, it's really intervention programs that we should have at the church level and as individuals. If If somebody could could teach us and to say these are the signs that you look for and intervene at this point. Mm-hmm. So like my friend who checks up on me, he's intervening yeah. and he knows when to intervene. He knows when something is off. And so we need to have that sort of relationship where we we know when to intervene. Helping our young ladies to deal with their challenges so they don't become mentally unstable. The same way we have blood pressure checks and blood sugar checks and dental examinations and so on. It would be nice if more of our health departments on the local church level also tap into certain resources to have us have mental health clinics. Yes. Because there are there are persons who are trained to assess your mental state. So if it's a situation where you've had a traumatic experience or you've had an experience that has caused you to experience many negative emotions, you can self-assess and say okay this is something and we need to get to a place where people are okay with saying i've been through something that has really hit me hard i need to be guarding against falling into this kind of depression to the point where i can't help myself so it's for us to be aware because if you don't know that you're susceptible to mental illness it can catch you off guard because as i'm saying we always look at the people who act crazy and eat out of the garbage bag and walk naked and or or barefooted on the road but even those of us who are clean clothes normal smell good people who don't eat out of garbage bag Mm -hmm. can experience those things and I'm glad Essence touched on the exercise Mm -hmm. because mental illness, mental wellness and physical wellness are Simon's twins. If you are mentally well, it will spill off into your physical health. And if you're physically well, it also impacts your mental health. So as women especially, we have to take care of ourselves. Mm -hmm. We're the the fear of vessel, we're the weaker vessel, they say. We have to take care of ourselves. We have to eat properly. We have to get our sleep. We have to be careful how we allow negative emotions to overwhelm us. And we have to talk. 
Mm-hmm. Cry if you have to cry. Why? Can do you know that a good cry can prevent you from falling into depression? Yes. You're experiencing heartbreak. Cry, you feel better. Yeah. Go and take a walk. Go for a jog. <laughs> it helps. So it's it's really about getting the information out there and having people armed with this information so that we're alert, we're aware, so we can approach ourselves and others from that informed platform. Shanika, I haven't heard you much. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, as you said about the heartbreak and stuff with our age, I think one of the major problems is that this generation has their they have been trying to suppress the feelings. And so if they are heartbroken, they don't want to cry because it's a symbol of weakness. I have a friend who she was depressed last year because she just felt as if everything was coming down on her. You know, she was going through a rough breakup. We we're preparing for Cape and she didn't want to disappoint her parents. And so she just felt like a big disappointment. Mm-hmm. And I had to share my experiences with slight depression because I don't think I was as depressed as it's not eating. If I'm not eating, something is very wrong. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so um, I had to share that little experience and it's helped her. Mm-hmm. And so the intervention thing, is a, it's major, it's paramount because someone, prob- they just probably need someone to keep pressing them, pressing them until they, you know, give in and tell you what is wrong with them because she didn't tell us um, at the first instant, and to tell you the truth, I was just beginning my new school. So this was a new friend. Mm-hmm. And she didn't tell any of the friends that she had before because she just thought they wouldn't understand. And her cousin was even saying that he's, he prayed for a friend, for her to get a friend who shared her um, similar experiences and could you know, speak to her, could relate to what she was going through. And he said that he thanks God that I came to the school at the point that I did because I'm telling you, she was really depressed, and her grandmother also had died. Oh, so, you know, it's a whole lot of stuff mm-hmm. to be going through, especially at this age. Right. You know, turning point, you just enter an adulthood, basically getting um, slingshotted into, into adulthood. And so, she just could not handle the pressure of all of these things happening at once. Mm-hmm. And And sometimes we say things that negate or cause people to feel like their feelings aren't validated. Like mm-hmm. a young person will say something and so it's like, you're too young to have those issues. Exactly. Or, you know, nothing in our life will stress you. No, at this point, the world is at a place <clears throat> where stress is real for everybody. Yes. Even as a teacher, when I observe my students, I feel like high school has become much more stressful than it was for me. And I didn't go to high school 50 years ago. (laughs) No, it's real. Because some of the issues that our children, our young people are facing are extremely stressful. Broken homes, parents separate, financial challenges in the home. And then everything is so out there. Social media is so prevalent. The news depresses some of us because the news is so filled with crime and corruption and all Same kinds thing of things. Day. And we have to be careful about how we allow these things to get on our insides. Yeah, that is so real for me. I remember, um, what, three, four years ago, I just boycotted the news. The news. Um, I think I started listening to the news late last year um, because after I heard that this man, um, they, they were downtown, um, this Higla, she had her baby there six six year old and apparently baby strayed and this man grabbed her and when they found the child she was all by the pig pain and the person and she was beating her in her bottom and i was like okay this is just too much for me this said i w- i didn't realize that it, it it soaked in so much um i remember couldn't sleep you know when i i eventually felt as when i woke up i remembered it so it was like the first thing on my mind and i said okay this is where i break it now yeah, I was traumatized by the news. And it was that day, it was just back to back. It's just terrible. And so I said, no, I'm going to pause the news since it's affecting me so negatively. Mm-hmm. And I paused it for four years. I didn't yeah. know what was happening in the country. One of the things I want us to think about, especially women in our age group, um, you guys are in school, Essence and I, we work. Yeah. But I want us to think about the fact that many times 
we ourselves do not validate our own struggles with mental illness. For example, if you have the flu or if you are sick and you go to the doctor and he writes your sick leave, you feel perfectly justified to say to your employer, I will not be in today because I'm not well. I find that for me, I have a personal struggle saying to my employer, I will not be in today because I'm not well when what I'm experiencing <coughs> is mental illness, like depression or I'm struggling with a family issue. It may be something as simple as um, there's a conflict going on in my household. Nothing big, you know, but it really has weighed down on me and I don't feel like I have the mental capacity to take on the job today. I want us to get to a place in our society where people feel okay knowing that they can take a mental health day. Some days you just need to stop. Mm -hmm. You just need to stop and take stock of yourself. Probably go and do something to just relax your brain, take your mind off the things that are stressful. Mm -hmm. Because some of us even work in toxic environments that affect our, our mental health. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you have to take a break. I want us to get to a place because I feel that many employers and many employees too don't feel like it's okay to take a day unless you are physically unable not to work. Mm -hmm. Unable to work, sorry. So if you're not sick, if you're not feeling pain, if you're not wrong with your body, you can't get up and move and whatever, you should come to work. But up here, you're not okay. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about that reality? Um, we'd have to lobby for that <laughs> um, because we have a culture already where persons in Jamaica, they take work not so seriously. So we'd have to really lobby for something like that and really educate persons and go through um, organizations speaking about this. And that's why I'm saying more needs to be done for mental awareness yes. so that persons know um, in different spheres, especially the work world, where you're pressured, and especially mm -hmm. if you run your own business, mm -hmm. you can't really take a day off. And especially yes. with women. Yes. Uh, you know, women, we try to prove ourselves that oh, we yes. are supposed to be there, working and really be an on the top as we should, and we deserve equal pay, that sort of things. I mean, we have a lot to prove as women, but really we need to stop and take a check in terms of our mental health. Are we doing what is right for us? Mm -hmm. You know, so these are the questions we need to ask. And we need to have more forums, more discussions on this sort of thing, because it is telling mm -hmm. in terms of the statistics how many women, younger women, um, are experiencing mental illnesses. But, you know, we'll get there. I think we will eventually. And and it's it's good that more and more people are speaking about it mm -hmm. and that we are becoming more aware of the fact that mental illness is a real thing. And, you know, dealing with difficult situations in the stressful world can affect us. So it's just my hope and my prayer that as a church, as a society, as a world, we'll get to a place where people will feel more comfortable admitting that they're having challenges and the help will be there for them to prevent crossing that line and going to the phase where they're eating out of garbage vans and walking mm -hmm. barefooted and so on. Yeah, and so, we need to be more compassionate. Um, that's true. You know, sometimes persons will laugh when they see certain situations. But as Crystal mentioned earlier, I have gone to the point now where I pray for them. Once I see anybody, I remember driving early one morning and I saw this mentally challenged man and he was taking his hands in the sewer water, taking up the garbage out there with his hands. And I said, God, you are the only one keeping these people. You know, and I really pray for them because I realize there must be a God mm -hmm. because they are there still. Even in their mental state, they are not harmed even with the things that they do that would physically harm you and me who are in our right minds. Mm -hmm. God has kept them. And so I have found myself praying more for them. Once I see them, I just pray and say, God, remember your children. Yes. And so we need to get to that point now where we are praying more for each other. We no longer live selfish lives where we are only remembering ourselves and what we want. Mm -hmm. Sometimes our prayers now need to be for others. Yes. True. yes. And so that's it where I, I really want to leave it there. That's yes. my think, closing remark. You I know, think that's on an mental excellent illness. note to end on because at the end of the day, our <laughs> surest way to prevent mental illness is to trust in God and depend mm -hmm. on him for all things thank you ladies so much for sharing this has been a really profitable discussion on this topic and i am really looking forward to seeing us behave differently when it comes to mental illness generally as a society 
and you know to really help to alleviate some of the things that are happening among us as women and for anybody out there who's experiencing anything traumatic depressing any kind of mental illness do not be afraid to reach out and get help God is always there, so we ask you to pray. Pray for those who you know are experiencing challenges, and we really hope that you will be able to save yourself the fate of suffering from chronic mental illness. Thanks for listening to The Purple Door. This podcast is made possible by the Women's Ministry Department of the Central Jamaica Conference for listeners like you. Visit them at centraljaa.org. Like The Purple Door on Facebook and Instagram and leave your comments and questions. And remember to subscribe so you never miss a show. Join us next week for another great discussion. Until then, be blessed.